Doug, uh, Doug, just let me know if there's anything in particular you wanted to start off with or, um, or John or Brian as well from CISA. <clears throat> Kevin, my thought was just maybe walk through uh, the designs uh, as you have them and then I've got a little bit of feedback from our FIED teachers and hopefully we can work through that. Okay, no, that sounds good. So I'll share my screen, the, just a moment here. All right, this should come up just a moment. Let me know when you can see this. We can see it. Okay, so uh, just because it's been a little bit of time uh, since we last met, what I'm gonna just do is we're gonna go over the, the, the pool side of it first. And then uh, we'll go over um, the locker room side of it. Because the pool, the way we go through this is the pool really impacts what happens to the locker room and potentially the multi-purpose room uh, in a few different ways. So we want to start with the, with the pool uh, component first. So what I wanted to do is just to refresh our minds a little bit. Uh, when we last met, we had a few, I think there's four concepts here that we looked at. One was basically identical to what you had uh, uh, cur have currently. Uh, that was not preferred. This was an alternative. Uh, again, pretty similar though. So then we had an option C, which had this divider wall with this ramp approach down and then two swimming lanes on the side. And so there was the, for the longer pool, um, this was uh, the preferred option, but still some updates needed to that. And then this was the other preferred option, the smaller pool, <clears throat> the much smaller pool that would uh, also incorporate a multi-purpose uh, activity area for the, the other usable space, we'll say. So let close that. So with that, Matt and team at WTI uh, ran with that and kind of just cleaned up the two preferred concepts. So what we wanted to do is share those. Matt, um, if you want, I can turn it over to you and just kind of talk through any of the updates that, that these incorporate. Uh, sure. Uh, the first option, which is shown on the screen currently is essentially in both instances, we are building this pool within the framework of the existing pool. So it's going to be a little smaller. You'll notice it's 70 feet as opposed to the um, existing pool, 75 feet. Uh, it has a stair entry into two feet of water, a wide stair entry into two feet of water. Uh, the depth then tapers down to a turning depth of, of three six. Uh, has a a common wall between the two to separate, and then there are two uh, lap lanes or, or uh, <clears throat> um, teaching instructional areas with water depths from three six to five, and then you'll see the the safety line, and then from five feet it tapers down to six foot three of maximum depth. Okay. Any questions? So the only the only question I have, and it was really for our fire team, was that. Uh, the way that looks, Matt, is that that's about equally split there uh, between the deeper end and the shallow end, about 17 feet. I can't read the numbers on it, but I think it was 17. They're, they're is split the, 17 feet, 17 feet. Yes, it's equally split between the shallow. <clears throat> well, there's a shallow half and a, and a yeah. swimming half, yes. Yeah. My question for them is, do we really need 17 feet of two feet to three and a half feet because the majority of use during an open swim is going to be older kids and then they're all going to be crammed in one half. Um, and should we really, I guess my question is Earl and I talked about this after our last users group meeting, one of our board members is, should that be offset a little bit? You know, could we get away with uh, 13 feet uh, of space in that shallow area and, and have like 21 feet in the in the deeper area because there's going to be more kids in that portion of it 
most of the time. I can't imagine anybody really from second grade on up wanting to spend the majority of their time in the two feet to three foot six area. Yeah. And that's the majority of our school population. So should we offset that and almost create an extra, you know, extra space there it would almost create an extra lane there too, but. You could, I mean, there, there's certainly, there's certainly nothing uh, uh, in that. And uh, from a program standpoint, that could make sense. How much width do you think you need in that shell area as teachers? It's a decently long space. It is. Because it's, it's really long. long. That's long. what I was worried about is also, that if you, have, if you have that much width and that much length, it's going to be almost empty when you have yeah, the older yeah. kids in there. You know? So, so it's like 12 feet enough instead of. I mean, how far yeah. away from the wall do they usually yeah. go? Would you do <laughs> Not very far. Really kids Not know. very far at all. So if we made that 12 feet, would that work? I think so. Mm -hmm. and then, I think we could do it. Would that give you another know, swimming lane then? Or yeah. 10. Make it 10. Even 10. Make it 10? Because when you yeah. Yeah. make it 10 and no, give you yourself another lane. If you put that eight rope and we tell them make it 10. Then you give yourself a lane. You just gave yourself another lane there. We, we agree with you, Matt. 10 sounds great. Yeah. We'll do some very crude drawing here. I'm, I'm doing it. Hey, you're, you're ahead of me. I'm doing it as a sketch in my notepad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we'll take that group and so you can kind of imagine what this is going to look like then as we do something like that. Yep. That's a good. That's a good point. I, I, I like the logic behind that. It definitely gives you more usable space. Um, you still have all of this. As this is a flat zone down here, so that doesn't really change. Right. Um, it's kind of that mid depth, uh, three feet six inches. Yeah, we're good with that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, any other comments on this one? Otherwise, we will jump to the uh, op option F is what it's called. All right. So option F, um, Matt, overall, there were just a few updates to this. Um, Matt, is there anything in particular you wanted to share regarding this? Uh, no, this is, this is as the uh, RFP indicated, a, a smaller option, reducing the, the pool to approximately half of its present size, uh, stair entry into three feet of water, and then a water depth from three foot to, again, the break point of five foot, and then, the, and then uh, it's sloping down to six foot of water depth, six foot. Water depth is the maximum water depth. Okay. Any com and we will go over the utility area, the multi-purpose area when we look at the locker room concept. Um, but before we get into that, any comments on this? Just one for Matt. Matt, I, I had heard at some point, and I don't know the answer to this. This is really a I'm not asking a rhetorical question. On a pool this size at this depth, would it, if adults were to use it as a community, would it, would it need to be guarded? Yes. Okay. So if a community member came in between eight to ten o'clock in the morning to use it, it is designed <clears throat> that it would need guards based on state code. Yes, and and it's driven not by the size but by the water depth. Okay. Oh. I, that's what I was wondering. And and what's that break point for water depth? Five feet. Okay. Five feet. Once, you're, once you're over five feet, it's considered deep water. <clears throat> and so if you're at a pool that, that that is five feet or less, you know, we would typically, if, if we were asked to do a pool that was to be unguarded, we would make it four foot 11. Because then, it. then, then it, at, at virtually, I mean, it's you know, an adult, <laughs> can stand at any point in the pool then. Okay, I would think. Thank you. Okay. 
Doug, is that something um, I assume, you know, obviously that has operational impacts to it. Um, have you guys discussed that or does that need further discussion? Um, that was just something that I had thought about if we were going to increase community access. You know, I just didn't know where that break point was, but I knew Matt would, so that's why I asked the question. Is that worth no discussion, though? I mean, sure. I, I mean, what do you, I, if we went to only five instead of six, I'm kind of assuming it doesn't affect your teaching. I mean, I don't know. The only thing it would affect would be, that I would be treading. Or treading. If we, uh, when we teach treading. But you still can tread in. But yeah, I can still tread in my pool. I mean, I just. Under Frank's four, whatever the community access There's part of it would be nice, yes. but kind of I'm not sure you wouldn't have to try. What do you think? Yeah, we're not having a lifeguard. I know that's yeah. why I mean, and then it could be open. I mean, I'd, you'd still want to restrict hours, but then you wouldn't have that. Is that something care that was that was a huge point too yeah. for people to be able to come in at different times? Yeah, whatever in that. But mm -hmm. what about like security of the building and that sort of thing? You know, being a school is that? Well, the way that the okay. the way that the access is designed in the locker rooms for this is they would be able to never enter okay. the school the school building. Okay. So we that was something that Matt and I worked on on the first <coughs> phase before we brought it to you guys was if we created a. A spot it would be essentially they can come in without entering the building use unisex bathrooms and then they would be able to do it I just didn't know what the depth break was right. for guarding so and then they would be able to we would just have it during school hours. it's not like it's 24 hours a day it's just during no there would be certain hours of the day and potentially that it was like your 8 to 10 so, in the morning yeah, yeah. Sort of thing. It, I think it's cool idea. I do too. As far as I'm not a swimmer, as far as doing laps and things, yeah. What does so? So what does it, if we go to four foot eleven? What does it limit? What do you not get? Is I guess what what's the trade off? Is what I'm trying to get to, and maybe Matt can chime in. But most kids are going to be good with it. It's mm -hmm. just going to limit the ones that think they're doing deep water diving and stuff yes. like that, which they, they're not going to no, have. Like no. Very few kids. But the difference between five and six feet on that is, is in, no. in, in, there's not going to make any difference. No, no, it's not. But there's a lot of benefits towards five feet. You probably right. have a lot more benefits with the use rather than right, five feet, yeah. that element. Go ahead, Matt. I was going to say you, you lose the ability to teach any um, diving entries from the side. Yeah, shallow water diving. Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah, Doug, obviously that's something that uh, may take some further thought and discussion. Um, Matt, I think in the scheme of things, though, really doesn't have too much of an impact on the footprint of either pool, probably, does it? <clears throat> okay, thanks. What was Good that? Matt, what did you? Uh, sorry, I missed your response. No, I didn't have anything. Okay. Um, all right. Any other comments on the pool layouts? Otherwise, we'll jump to the locker rooms. No, we're good. Go ahead, jump to the locker rooms. All right. So we've done two concepts here. Uh, and the two concepts are necessary because the locker room configuration changes based on the which pool option is, is uh, preferred. So, and that's primarily, as we'll talk about here in a little bit, and I'll Matt explain a little bit more of the code requirements for this. The community access component um, and being able to separate community use from school use is kind of a key driver. So we wanna be able to separate off community use, uh, which we'll look at in just a bit, from student use, student locker rooms, restrooms, that sort of thing. So what I'd like to start with, this is what we call concept one which incorporates that larger uh, pool that, um, that we just talked about. And so with this 
And Matt, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just do kind of a brief overview and then I'll have you explain a little bit more of the calculation that goes into it. With this one, uh, the community access component would need to be a addition to the south side. And that's driven by the number of um, showers, toilets, urinals dedicated to community use. If we want those to have separate space than the school spaces. And maybe Doug, um, actually let's do this. Doug, if you wouldn't mind, share a little bit of why that's an important piece of be able to separate community and student function just operationally. Does that make sense? Oop, are you there, Doug? Doug's no, no, we just had to say that 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 so there really is no use during the day per se. Right. That, that okay. would have to happen. Do you want to step in? Yeah. Uh, hey, Doug, I wasn't watching and <laughs> asked a question for you while you uh, walked away, so sorry about that. Um, sorry, I Doug, didn't use the you... restroom real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. So, Doug, if you wouldn't mind sharing, um, the last one of the last times we talked, we talked about separating all the community locker rooms and versus the school, the, the team and the male and female locker room. <laughs> And if there's any further discussions on that, um, I guess, could you just share, you know, just operationally why that's an important component? Well, it was part of our discussion in a lot of our uh, user group meetings very early on was that um, if we were going to allow for community access uh, to the pool or increase community access, which didn't require them to use our locker rooms, otherwise, if they use utilize our locker rooms, you know we do get some sometimes some complaints that uh, community members are in there you know, when all the kids are in there for sports and they're changing and they're changing, and then with increased uh, concerns about security, having their own entrance would be important if we were going to increase operational hours, which was another theme we heard in our in our user group meetings was can we increase operational hours of the pool maybe during the day when the Fayette uh, department would not be using it so that community members could use it more frequently. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted a dedicated um, area for a community locker room. So, and we can, we'll just kind of go through the logic here behind it. So with that approach, what we did is we said, okay, this pool, requires uh, or has a specific occupant load is uh, based on the size of the pool that determines how many plumbing fixtures so showers uh, toilets sinks and drinking fountains are re are required for community use so if you think about that what that means is that we can't count these ones over here because those will be student spaces student locker rooms so we have to have a dedicated space for community use um, Matt, is there anything else you would add to that? Um, no, not at, not at this point. Okay, and uh, again, just to reiterate, this is heavily uh, uh, operational, we'll say, uh, impact, right? So if, if we want those two, two groups to remain separate, um, that this is a layout, but if there's a way that we can say, okay, community use can't be at the same time as student use, then we reassess it. Um, but I still think there there's some challenges because it's you know even nighttime if you've got a gym practice going on or a game uh, and community wants to be in using the pool that's still an issue right of being able to use these locker rooms. So it's it's not just students and community using the lock the pool at the same time. Uh, I would say more often the issue is probably going to be gym usage and community usage and then what do we how do we handle that so the other and we'll 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 get into the details of the pool layout because between the two they're the actual team the male female and team locker rooms are very similar so for the smaller pool option um because it is a smaller pool 
and that gives us a smaller occupant load for the pool. That requires significantly less plumbing fixtures for the community use. So we've identified, here's that existing um, entrance. So we've identified an exterior access here um, for community entrance into the pool. We have a locker room with a dedicated shower slash restroom. So there's two of those here and those have sinks in them as well. Some lockers, bench for changing, and then uh, back into the pool area. And then this is also the multi-purpose room. So there, when you look at the overall impacts of the smaller pool, there is definitely some advantages from, uh, you know, just what will eventually be a cost impact by not having to do an addition to the south. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, is there any questions on that before I kind of go into the locker rooms and then the multi-purpose room? Not specifically, you know. Okay. I just like to. Uh, uh, this is, sorry, sorry to interrupt. This is Kent, the athletic director at Kickapoo. I just like to comment on. I think that you're exactly right. The issue, if we're going to increase uh, community hours in the evening, is going to be the locker rooms. Um, you know, oftentimes we have all three locker rooms in use by uh, the home team, the visiting team, the officials. Um, you know, there's still a need for. Uh, trainer to have access to a locker room to do the different things. So I think that a separate community entrance, much like the one that is on the screen now, would be very beneficial if we're interested in increasing community hours um, after school, particularly <coughs> during events and uh, contests. Okay. So with the with the locker rooms. Uh, what we, what we did is we tried to salvage as much of the existing walls where we could. So where you see these gray shaded walls here, those are existing walls that we're, that we're trying to leave them to remain, um, you know, so we can try and salvage as much of the existing uh, as possible. It's the, you know, there's probably a few things that we'll have to clean up here eventually once we understand where, you know, maybe there's a plumbing fixture in a wall that we need to demo up a section of wall for piping, things like that. But in general, what we've done is we have a male, female, and then a team locker room. And uh, so we'll go, I think, left to right here. So male locker room, you'd approach from the kind of the common corridor between the gymnasium here. There's a door that leads into the male locker room. Uh, lockers here, restroom here, and then as you approach towards the pool, we have the we have three uh, showers over here. And we typically like to do these showers where it's a five foot long stall. And that way we can make them, it's very easy to make them accessible uh, for ADA as well. It's a it's called a roll-in type shower. So it's, 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 they're all the same size. It's, it's pretty straightforward. And then that has direct access to the pool. This also has an office. And one of the things that this does incorporate is this office has doors uh, directly accessed from the pool side. So this would be for if we have lifeguards, they're able to, you know, go here. There's a phone in here that they have access to um, for for that office as well. This does also incorporate a single occupant. Uh, toilet room as well. So this would be a private toilet room here, and then this is your typical multi-fixture uh, toilet room over here. Female locker room, again, very similar, just a kind of a mirror image. We come in, uh, we've got restroom here. We've got uh, two private toilet rooms here. We have a small storage room that really just ended up being kind of some space that was remaining here. So we use that for storage. Uh, one other thing I will note is we tried to keep this space as open as possible within the locker rooms. Now it is possible, uh, you know, Kent, if you needed more locker capacity that we could do, you know, uh, rows coming out this way. We really try not to though, because when you think about a team coming in for halftime or after a game, having this as an open space to gather is a lot is very beneficial if you if you think about just the multi-functional use of that. So it really comes down to the locker count 
and uh, and making that work. So the female Man. locker room, as we said, oh, go ahead. Um, well, you're not quite there yet. You're moving your way across. I'll save my question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, and then the female locker room also has the three showers, access to the pool. So then team locker room, uh, again, we have access here from that same corridor. We've got a private toilet room. We have an office here. Uh, one thing that we could look at is we have the two toilet rooms here. So if there's a preference to have, you know, maybe maybe the office is over on this female locker room side versus here, you know, this could be potentially the storage room. So we could flip flop these. Uh, Let's do that right now. Okay. Okay. Do that right now, please. That, I think that's a great okay. idea. We were just having a sidebar here, so. Well, we need the baseball storage too, and you need to be in the girls' locker room. So. Um, can't quite think of this, but on that, this is really minor, but over on the male locker room side. Talk louder, Sam, so we can hear you. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I, mean, I muted you, so no Oh, did you mute me now? No, we're over. No, I was just saying back over on that male locker room side, I was thinking about our officials during basketball season. We never have anywhere for them to go that's not scrunched. If they came right into that storage area and, but went into the male locker room to use that bathroom, could there be a door that makes them so they can't hear what the team's talking about? But they could use the bathroom and then go into the storage room as their waiting place or you know thinking about so they them. would use well we never know where to put them but i so one of the things that one of the things that kent and i and eric weagle were talking about was the team locker room is going to be a team locker room no matter who's no matter playing who. and so we're always going to have one open locker room oh, that officials true. could be put in that's right? true and that's true. And whether it's guys versus guys, then we don't have to stick the visiting team in the girls locker room. They can go to the male locker room. If it's no, girls versus true. girls, they can use the female, the visiting team can use the female locker room and the girls use the team locker room. Right now, the team locker room has always been an addition to the boys side of things. So the boys that are in football would keep all their stuff in there uh, throughout the whole year. When they go to gym, they would use the team locker room. That's that's not going to happen anymore in this oh, new design. It's going to be a team mm -hmm. locker room for no matter who is playing. And so that was one of the questions I actually had for Matt was that wall that separates the mud room from the team locker room. Can we open that up if we didn't want to use it as a mud room, Matt? There's that load bearing. The, the one that goes uh, the other way, up, up and down, that's right between the team locker room. Yeah, right there. Kevin? Yeah. Yeah, I can take that one. Yeah, um, no, I don't believe so. We've got a column right there. Um, I think that's our really, without digging into, you know, just off the top of my head, Doug, that's what we have as load bearing elements. So I think we could open this up here if that was an interest. Yeah, I, we're talking about uh, reutilizing a different space potentially for storage that we use that mudroom for. So I'd like to what we'd like to do potentially is put in real nice uh, open wood lockers with chairs that sit in them and really just turn that space into a, a, a true functional team locker room concept for our athletes. Uh, whether they're, you know, we're talking about the um, girl side or the boy side. So we want to you know, increase the locker room locker capacity there to the space. So, yeah. So I think I could see it being something like this, where we would still have this would act as like a little vestibule if we're going to maintain that exterior access, Doug. Um, yeah. So we come in there. We would just change this to a single door. So door. Then we can narrow that up a little bit. Um, and then what that does is then we would yeah. bear with me just a bit here. Shuffle some colors around. Maybe if we left that a double door and had a little bigger vestibule, it could be an area where got, uh, people could take their shoes off. We could have a couple benches in there so they didn't track the mud and things into the team locker room. Yep. 
Yeah, we can kind of see what this. Even if we. We always had to. Yeah, we talked about putting bench outside yeah. too. Yeah. That's what we used to do when we come in for football. We always take them off outside. You didn't take them off in. So something like that. So we will still have a column there, yeah. but that I I'm not too concerned. That would really open that up. We still get. Sight lines are solved there. That's not an issue. This locker would just stretch up here. We would just kind of line this up there. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I like it much better. Yeah. Me too. That room doesn't get you as good. <clears throat> okay. Good. I like that. Good. Um, I don't. Lock. I don't often see uh, see schools taking away storage space. So, we'll we'll think this is the first. <laughs> well, we're we're thinking about building an exterior shed for our track, which would free up some space in that shed, and we're just we're moving stuff around in our minds here. So, <laughs> yeah, no, that and that that makes a lot of sense. This is a this is a time to take advantage of it and use that space as best as possible. So. So, could this laundry have to have be a specific size? Could Fian's room be a little bit bigger? Because you can almost stand in there and go like this. We were thinking about him, that treatment room. Could that, that would be moving a wall so that's already there. So I didn't know if you'd want to do that. But while we're thinking about it, his room is so small. If you get a parent in there that's looking at an injury during a game or whatever, sometimes they ask to move out into the hall. Any chance that that could, laundry could be smaller and Fian's room a little bit bigger? Or, Something. Well, your laundry stuff has downsized since. I know. Because you don't have the big dryers for that, like you used to have, do you, in there, Mark? I think the big one's still in there. The big three? one's still in there. Mm -hmm. Big dryer, yeah. Okay. I yeah. don't know. I was just thinking about him, too, and this whole thing. It's not real conducive to running even assessments on an athlete. Sometimes you have to bring them in the hall where it's not as private for the athlete if they're injured. Just a thought. I mean, I guess anything can be done as long as it's not a, a structural component, but even if it's additional room cost, with storage that's... and put in the spot in the storage room. But everything has a cost to it. <clears throat> oh well, that could be. Yeah, we could think about them later too. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. Can you? I'm expanding expanding the, the amount of work that's taking place here, but it looks like to me if you move that door that's to the right of the laundry and made that bulk, you could increase the laundry room size. You know, I mean, that's just wasted space right there. You could move the, yep. you, have, you could add some space to the laundry and put a piece of equipment in there and maybe shift that wall over and it wouldn't make it as tight. <clears throat> Can, let me ask this question. Can we just knock the wall out and leave it open yeah. for both? The treatment and laundry area is one big, large space, shared space. Um, I don't think that has a code impact that I know of. Because then, depending upon who's using it, it you know, there are times where we are doing laundry in there and stuff, but typically it's not when the They're trainer's there. So there, yeah. that way it's one shared space yeah. and shouldn't create a... Give him some more space to move around and water access. Like he could have a, there could be a sink in there. For yeah. yeah. He doesn't yeah. have a sink right now. Yep. <laughs> he has spigots and he fills up his tubs, but he does yeah. not have a sink to wash up or do anything like that. Yeah, let's let's just create that one big space. But I, okay. I still like moving that door a little bit, and then you could almost stick your washer and dryer in that in that little corner there that you just created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what I would probably do is just keep like this door, and then we would just infill this door. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll make your okay. space pretty, pretty efficient. Yeah, if you just put one door in there, it'll make a lot more yeah. efficient. Well, that pocket, like you said, can become either a piece of equipment or maybe that's towel storage, or I, I mean, I don't know what all you have in there, but. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
I like it. Good. Okay. Um, team locker room. So the team locker room has a, a private toilet room, uh, restrooms, or uh, toilet, toilet. We do not have a urinal in here, but what we could do is we could change this one out to be if that was preferred. Um, it kind of gets into a preference. If we have boys and girls, I guess I see it going both ways. I don't, if there's a preference, we, it, in the scheme of things right now, it, it doesn't really make a difference on cost, right? As far as putting together uh, cost estimates, that sort of thing. Uh, but if there's a preference, we can change this one out to be a uh, year and all. Can you blow that up a little bit? Yep. Thank you. Aging eyes, man. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting discussions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Doug, is that okay? Unless there's any other comments in here, um, I'll keep going and we'll do the multi-purpose room next. Yep. Okay. So multi, actually, before we get that, this, this concept also does still allow for a storage room here. So we're trying to offset some storage that was over here. So this would be primarily for, uh, PE storage, interior, uh, indoor PE storage. So basically be support for the gymnasium primarily. Um, Doug, I'm thinking that's what you guys, Doug and Kent, that's probably what you guys would primarily have in there. Yeah, our current storage, I went in and measured it because uh, one of the FIA teachers asked me, I think it's around 230 square feet and that one there you have at 346. So it, that gives them some additional storage. Um, the, the other pool obviously has more storage than uh, than that, the other locker room model pool storage area because we don't have the interior public restrooms. So, um, yes. but it does it does account for about an extra hundred, roughly 115 square feet of storage than we currently have. Yep. Um, and as you mentioned that the so this is a kind of a close up view of that community entrance. So you have the exterior access. So this could be programmed for different hours potentially of use. Uh, so you come into this basically a little vestibule. There's a drinking fountain here that's required for uh, the community access side. And then we have a locker area. And what we've done with this is we just have two private shower slash restrooms. So you, so it's a, you go in, lock the door, and you can shower, you can change, you can use a restroom, whatever you need to do. Uh, so it's a very family friendly as well for community access. And then the multi-purpose room. Uh, so we did start to, to look at some layouts with this. Uh, one of the things that we did check is the base of what we're left with is we have with this, with this pool size, we have eight feet of deck space on this side. Um, and that gives us a roughly 32 feet remaining for the multi-purpose room. Now this wall that you see here, we would intend for that to go all the way up to the, up to the, the underside of the roof. If that makes sense. So it's completely separating off that space uh, because this will have, we'll have, you know, separate ven ventilation for this space um, to, you know, so that way we can control it separately. Uh, we're showing a coiling door here, so we could, you know, if you have maybe some sort of event that's, you know, using both spaces, you're going back and forth, uh, you, this could be opened up here. Um, the, the, oh, we also did show a countertop and sink in here as well uh, that, you know, I think adds some value and adds some uh, ability for the space to be just more multifunctional uh, based on the all the variety of uses and um, events 
things like that that you guys have talked about using in there. So, and then we do have a door directly off the community access or community entrance that would lead into that space as well. Any comments? This oh, this is about 1,600 square feet as well. I didn't have a. Let me just add one more dimension on here. Um, 45. So length this way, we'll just take the shortest spot here. Yeah, so we're about 40, 48 and a half feet in length. Any comments? So just a question for the FIA teachers. And I guess the answer for board members is, do we need a coil door there? Do we need an overhead door to open up to go into that space? Is that something that we want free flow of traffic back and forth for any event we could envision or any fiat activity that you could envision? Yeah, you know, I think it would be like parties. summer. Yeah, uh, parties in like summer. Or if you were teaching a swimming class and then you came into that room to do a CPR and you had your mannequins out and you're going back and forth and but you would never leave kids unattended in there, so hmm. it, it would be just something you you either Fire in that room, or you, yeah, we were either in that room or we're not. Yeah. So we would keep it down, but it would probably be community type things where you would have that open. If you yeah, I can see the end of like a pool party and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, like people like want to be in there, and then they can still see yeah. the kids swimming in the pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they can do both and then still have access to both. I think if they're doing it, I would have the I would have the space big enough. Well, I wonder what's cheaper. You should have walk through doors without putting the accordion. Or yeah, whatever one's cheaper in here. Putting the accordion doors in the car is more than two other doors you got in there. Right. A way to get things yeah. through. It's not like we have to move anything in and out. It's more just like oh, freeze it up. Yeah. Is there is there any windows in that wall? That's yeah. 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 We're showing windows along there as well, um, and we you know it's kind of. I think we, you know, you want you want to have some views, you know, so you can see what's happening in both spaces for supervision at a minimum. Well, as long as there's the ability to see into the pool. Mm -hmm. right. So, was there a, was there a consensus on the on the door or having access between the two this way? Considering you've got the other two doors there, Sam and Dustin, do you really want or need that opening at the other end? If I had purpose, I wouldn't use it much. No, it's more I thinking think about it or not. Yeah, I think it would be cool for parties. It would, yeah, that's the only thing I'm thinking of is parties. Or if you were teaching something, if you had even rented the space out for. Oh yeah. Teaching. What I what yeah. I would worry about worry about is the monitoring of that space if you bring up the coil door and then you've got people that go in and you got a party and you got yeah. some people that kids are running mm -hmm. yeah, back you're right. and forth There's more control dragging the other right. food in to the, yes, yeah that yeah. was another concern yeah take mm -hmm. them take it the other thing that we can do with this is this door we would want to always this door we'd want to close around just to, for controlling temperature from our yeah. we'll say our vestibule to this but you know this door could have a hold open on it so really all you're doing is you're just going around the corner there and i think also from a safety perspective i like probably not doing the coiling door because then that directs everyone back to our 15 foot wide deck which is just safer to have the trap the pedestrian flow around that way so where the coil door was could that be a window or could you continue yeah. one more window space yeah, I whatever. actually, I think it, I think it looked nice to do something, a pattern that's kind of consistent yeah. along there. Yep. Okay. You're, you're also separating the HVAC ventilation systems and zones by keeping that door yep. closed or, yeah. or not having the door. Right. Yep, yep, that's true. Okay. So Kevin, that... Kevin, from a mechanical perspective, are we going to be able to utilize that um, the 
coated air handling unit that was put in uh, four or five years ago and dedicated to that space? Yeah, I believe, um, and we're actually just wrapping up that report, Doug, but um, that the, the unit is in good condition, and then that is the plan right now is that we're reusing that uh, just because it's, it's in good condition, so. Yep, perfect, thank you. All right, so that brings us full circle on this, what we call concept, we're calling this, uh, this one's gonna be called concept two with the smaller pool. Any further <laughs> comments on this one? All right. So concept one that we talked about a little bit before has the addition to the south. And really what it is, is it, it just has more plumbing fixtures and that's based on how large the pool is. So <clears throat> tells us, and then code tells us, all right, if the pool is this big, you have this potentially this many occupants, this many occupants needs this number of plumbing fixtures. So the, the other item with this is we also have to separate between male and female then as well, based on the number of fixtures required. So it's dedicated male. Um, it's not as nice as the other option because it would, these are just like your multi fixture restrooms. So you don't have the, the family restrooms either, um, family you know restroom slash shower room that the that concept two has. We could do that with this option if you would like to see that. It would just take up more space to just because those the 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 private toilet slash shower room um, just take up more space for each of them. So I think that would maybe be a good uh, feedback if you do have preference one way or another. Board members, what are your thoughts? And that's, I mean, obviously if we expand it, it just is proportional cost wise to expand that space since we're already adding to the south, so. Correct, yep. I don't know. Seems to me it's well, kind of I guess, give and take is yeah. what it is. Yep. You know what I mean? We get we get larger locker rooms, but you don't get the unisex that that you got with the other one. And just yep. Okay. No, we can, and that's fine. Yeah, that we can leave it like this for now. Uh, but that might be, you know, if there's further discussion on that. That would be good. Um, you know, this, this serves the function of the community use. It does the job, but um, maybe not quite as convenient, right, for families, so. So what I'll do is I'll kind of go over the other items that change with this concept. So as, as Doug mentioned, the storage room on this one is larger. So it's about 730 square feet because we don't have those community locker rooms right here um, taking up some space. Um, so that's a benefit. The male locker room is the same. Female locker room is the same. And the team locker room is the same. But however, we will make that same change over here to match those on both sides. So both basically the existing will be the same in both. We'll, we'll match these same comments on both of them. And it may be a good discussion for the board. You know, I, I wouldn't anticipate that, you know, we're making, obviously not making a decision at this point, but in your minds, is this, is this at all a, um, a, a non-option or is it really come down to, all right, once we get an idea where costs are on the two options to, to really make a more informed decision at that point. I think that's Cost would describe cost. where we're at. Yeah, more than nope. see what the cost comparisons are. Yep. Okay. Uh, Doug or Matt, is there anything else <clears throat> that you would add to this? I can't think of anything. I was on mute. Um, 
Kevin, from a, from a consistency standpoint, do you want us to start referring to the larger pool option as concept one and the smaller pool option as concept two to be consistent with what you're doing? Yeah, yes. let's do that going forward now that we've narrowed it down. Yep. We'll do. Have a nice job. Uh, let's see. So we talked about the pool concepts. We reviewed locker room concepts. Reviewed the code impacts of the of the different pool sizes, and that's what re uh, changes the community locker room sizes. Brian or John from CISA 10, is there anything else that you guys had? Otherwise, I'll kind of go over next steps. No, that, that sounds very good to me. Right, Brian? Anything from you? Sorry, I got to ask a question. Um, where are we at with the slide? Matt, I'll defer that one to you, the, the pool slide. Uh, we are still trying to find one that will fit in there. I actually was typing as we spoke with it to follow up with Adam on the status. Of that. That is. I'll have one yet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Thanks. Go ahead, go ahead. So, uh, Doug, did you have anything else to go over? No, Kevin, we're good. Okay. So, next steps, we are working through uh, finalizing the the schematic design cost estimates right now, and so then what the final deliverable is going to look like is we will um, by the targeted end of this month end of July, we have these two concepts updated. Um, and then there's also going to be narratives to go along with that. For, for example, like the pool, uh, Matt, you'll have uh, some narrative as, uh, on the pool side of it. Um, HVAC, plumbing, electrical will have a description of the scope of work, uh, cost estimates associated with that. And then the other item that we also need to incorporate is the um, estimated operational cost. And really what that is, is it's primarily going to be based on what size mechanical equipment does it take to run the pool? And then we can, uh, Doug, we may have to get some utility cost information from you or someone else at the school as far as just what are your rates. Yep. So uh, just to follow up on that, Kevin, the original uh, timeline that you had given us had kind of that July, Friday the 24th of July time frame. Are we going to be on track for that? Because we had a, a board meeting that we were going to set for the 27th of July, which is a Monday. I just don't want to have a board meeting if, if we're, if that timeline is still not intact. So just a heads up one way or the other would be really helpful. Uh, yeah, no, that works for us. We're internally, we're actually planning to have our cost estimate wrapped up. Um, Let's see, I think it's uh, end of the day, the 14th, then we'll just do our internal review. Uh, you know, I want to get that kind of cleaned up and, and buttoned up by end of next week. So that way we can we can get that to you. So I don't see that being a problem at all. Perfect, then we'll, we'll keep that scheduled meeting. Thank you. Yep. yep. Doug, how would you like that information presented? Do you need, uh, Kevin in attendance to, to present that to the board. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know that that would would hurt because I know there will be quite a few um, community members that have been interested in this whole process of, you know, looking at uh, the pool and and you know if we could do a brief presentation of option one and two at, at that meeting, that would be we could do it. This way, I think, um, if that would work for you, Kevin, that'd be great. Yeah, if, if we can do it in person or virtual, whatever your preference is, Doug, I'll be happy to help. All right, I'll 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 be in touch shortly when we make a decision on that. But uh, this seems to work real well as you blow it up just to you know save your drive time and stuff. I, I haven't had any concerns with it, so. I like it because I can actually uh, manipulate the drawings as we go as well so <laughs> yeah i think i think let's plan on virtual i think if there's no trish what do you think i'm 
good with that. This works well. Okay. And, yeah, and like Doug, if CISA could join as well, just to listen in, that would be great. Absolutely. So just kind of what will happen, guys, is we, you know, uh, in today's world, we stream our, our board meetings. And so um, we, we do it all through Zoom, though. So you'll just get a Zoom invite, and you can join uh, right away if you want. Or you can, you know, I can email you when, when it's your turn on the agenda. Um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll put you towards the top because it's <laughs> probably the only thing on the agenda right now. Um, and then um, we'll, 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 we'll loop you in. And then when, it, when you're done, you can leave or you can stick around and watch the rest of the board meeting and do anything else. <laughs> and, uh, sounds good. We'll be good to go. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, we've actually been seeing more more school boards where we are just doing it virtually um, as well. So you're not the only one. Go ahead, Matt. And then, say that, and then in summary, from from our perspective, we will be revising option E or concept one to. Um, 10 foot wide for the uh, shallow water, 24 foot wide for the deeper lanes. There were no changes on option F or concept two at this yep. time. Yeah, the only thing that we'll have to have additional conversations on, Matt, is whether or not we want to change the depth so that can be. Right. An un unguarded pool. That's really the only discussion point I think that's left, as far as I can, I can tell. I can do some more research on that to, to make sure I'm, you know, I was shooting the camera. I want to verify that, and we can we can take a look at that. And also, but that's not anything that's necessary for right now. That doesn't impact, you know, won't significantly impact cost or anything. So, perfect. Okay. All right. Well, any other. Discussion for today. Nice job, Kevin. Yes, thank you guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you for the time. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. You too.